Welcome everybody to the all. <laughs> I was about to say the already. Please stop, bruh. Welcome to the smooth <laughs> frame podcast. We You're a host. couple of years behind, brother. Honestly, but what was that? <laughs> I really am. With your hosts Justin, Danny, and Chris. Welcome, guys. What's up, yo? Hey guys, nice day, nice day. I thought we would make this episode a special one. Or a special topic, at least, talking about everything Marvel, specifically the release of Black Widow, uh, the uh, the final episode of Loki, and then maybe just any you know Marvel movies we watched recently that you know we just yeah that, that we just watched recently, basically. Sounds like the perfect topic for Danny. <laughs> I just yeah, that sounds topic. pretty good, really. The last topic. <laughs> the other two days probably just gonna be like, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so I thought that we could start jump into Loki because it's literally fresh. We're recording the day of the last episode. Oh damn! Oh wait, um, so it was uh this this the season finale or what? Yeah, it's the season finale. Oh damn! Was it as shitty as I think it is? <laughs> well, we're about to find out. Tell us oh, oh, God. All right. I, I, I... Spell it, Chris. Spell it. Say it, Chris. Tell us what you think. Uh, what did I think about the finale? I was excited when Kang showed up, which I can rub it in and say Kang showed up. Yeah, you're such Luke an King. ass. When I saw... No, not Liu Kang. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, okay. No, it was um, <laughs> Kang the Conqueror. He's like he's supposed, he's gonna be like a a villain in like later in the MCU, and he's like uh, his okay. first like as far as we knew, our first appearance of him would be in the third Ant Man film. That's what Justin thought. But, you yeah, know, oh, shit. Right. Chris over here. <laughs> yeah, Chris, the cool guy. <laughs> The one Just thing you got right. I'm going to be real. Chris kept fucking messaging me. He goes, what do you think the bad guy is going to be? You think it's going to be old man Loki? I'm like, nah, I don't think it is. You think it's going to be Kang? I'm like, nah, there's no way it could be Kang. But and Kang was the like... one that I thought the most. I was all in for Kang. And you're like, nah, nah. They, they wouldn't reveal a major character like that and Loki. Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He um, was on the money, Justin. He was on the money, man. <laughs> Dude, what's weird? Um, okay, I should say this to Chris. What do you think of Kang? Like his per- like his performance. I'm uh, watching it right now. I'm literally watching. Like, I have it muted, but I'm, I have subtitles. I'm watching it. He's very. He's reminding me of Lex Luthor a bit. Yeah, like I wasn't a fan of what this character was. Like, I I felt like it was unique, different. But I wasn't a big fan of how he was. However, um, since you haven't watched all of it, I know that that's not the real Kang the Conqueror. Oh, damn. This is a variant of him. Yes, it is. It's a variant of him. He's kind of... Wait, wait, but like, is this like confirmed or is it just uh, speculation? It's com- no, it's confirmed. It's, it's in the, oh, it's okay, in the okay, episode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a variant of of Kang the Conqueror. He's known in this um, episode as He Who Knows. Um, he Who Remains. He Who, he who remains. remains. Yes, I'm sorry. He Who yeah, Remains. Get your shit yeah. straight, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and so he seems like a nicer variant of this Kang the Conqueror. Um, he was kind of just trying to seek peace because apparently... Uh, long ago, all these variants of himself were were kind of conquerors, like his name, Kang the Conqueror. So then he's yeah. the original one where he kind of um, killed, I think, the rest of them and created the TVA so that we wouldn't have these multiverse wars of other variants of characters. And so now it's just one sacred timeline 
one character, no other variants. Um, however, uh, Loki and Sylvie, or Sylvie, uh, kills this character. And now, the other variants, I guess Kang the Conqueror, the real one, is... Is uh, is back again and conquering worlds, and so that was the the ending of this episode, which is good. I like the ending. I like where it was going. However, I felt like I wasn't satisfied to the ending of the season because a new season was revealed. There will be a season two of Loki. Loki and Kang the Conqueror will obviously appear later on in movies too. Um, but I just didn't feel I was satisfied in the ending. I felt like this kind of was just a big setup to a movie instead of actual show that like should have had a beginning show. and should have had an ending, a satisfying ending to that show. You get me? Yeah, I get you. Um, I I knew about the ending because of Ponce, because I asked him, because he, he texted me <laughs> in the morning. And I was like, just tell him. I literally told him, just tell me. Uh, wait, wait. I'm pretty sure. What? No, I'm not joking. <laughs> oh, I was just like, he he told me um, that, oh, we're about to get conquered. And I'm like, no. And I was telling him, like, no, just just tell me, like, literally the episode. Because I, when we get home, when I get home, I have to record the, I'm going to start the podcast. And I have time to, I don't think I'm going to have time to watch it. So just tell me what it is. And he told me. And then I watched, like, a, a YouTube video of, like, the last five minutes of Loki. Right, and so I, I'm not so again. I, I so obviously I missed the whole you know middle right. between where I'm at it's, right now. It's not it's not that impactful. It's a very short episode. I think it's about thirty minutes without the credits, um, and the whole episode is just them talking. And I liked it for to a certain degree, but I wasn't expecting this to be a finale. You know, maybe if this was episode five, and yeah, I would have liked it. Or like that would have of like twelve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for it to be a finale, it was. I felt underwhelmed. Mm. I mean, oh, I, I I like that ending, the that little twist, because from what mm-hmm. it seemed like, Loki goes back to the TVA, and you know, all hell's breaking loose, and he's like trying to warn everybody, like, hey, there's this guy who has evil versions of himself who want to conquer multiverses yeah and he, he yeah. sees owen wilson and he's like hey uh owen oh, yeah. Hey, hey yeah he does the whole mobius, he tells him everything right? yeah he tells mobius he's like hey mobius you know there's, there's this guy he's he's taking over the world we, i mean the universe multiverse we gotta stop him and then mobius just goes who are you you know and you have this whole like wait what and then he goes out and no longer do you see like the three statues of the timekeepers now it's just a statue of kang so oh, shit. It's like this whole like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, like he's already too late. Like, it's already begun. Like, he thought he could make. Like, I'm assuming, right? Is that is that what happened, Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so like, he he thought that he could save, you know, what was happening. Um, well, I guess to a certain degree because he knew Sylvie was gonna kill, uh, the the variant of Kang. However, mm-hmm. he also knew that it was too late, right? So. Yeah, I think overall, I think maybe you you might disagree with me, Chris, but I think this ending might be the most impactful out of the show so far. In no, terms I, of the division. Yeah, like I agree I, with the MCU, right? Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that, of course, like because it's gonna lead to Doctor Strange, um, the Multiverse of Madness. It's gonna lead to Spider Man Three. Spider Man, Ant Man, right? Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. But that's why I said that this show is just a big setup to those movies, rather than a beginning and a satisfying end to this show. Because I don't feel like I I got what I wanted from this show from that finale. Um, mm. Like we got who they kind of pulled a Halo too. Or uh, you know, <laughs> it literally pulled Maybe. a Halo too, where like it like it tried to go. Sir, finishing this fight. Yeah, and then it just ends. 
Yeah, yeah. So I was I was underwhelmed, but it's still cool though. Like, like I said, I was excited to see Kang, and it's cool that that this is leading into those movies. There will be a season two of Loki, so that's pretty cool. You know, that's that's all kind of cool. You know, like how they are trying to like interconnect everything, but at the same time, it, it feels like you have to do so much homework now. You know. Personally, personally, because I mean, it was already enough with the films, but now the shows and all this other extended stuff, which is like, bro, I don't know if I really want to do all that. But you're saying that because you you don't want to do that anymore, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and anymore, it's because I mean, you know, it was fun, but then you know, just over time, I'm like, eh, I don't care about this much anymore, you know. Yeah, like I get you. Like that's how you feel, you know. Um, but I think it just adds more to the to the content of people that do want to watch. You know, I should be honest. I, I, I want nudity. I, I need hardcore <laughs> nudity in there. All right. Let's just be straight up. I'm gonna speak for what everyone else wants to say, but can't you say. Need a hardcore we nudity. All... Yes. Yes. <laughs> if you want to see them, just watch like separate movies. Like I know there's a movie well, where like uh, Owen Wilson, Elizabeth Olsen, and uh, Josh Brolin. No, I want it all in one place. <laughs> no, you gotta no. go searching for it. Like how you said, it's background. You gotta search for your. You gotta do some research. Danny, Ken, Ken Feige's working on it right now. He's oh, shit, my man, Deadpool. Kevin. Oh, oh, Deadpool? oh, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. He's, oh, but I mean, that that that's Fox Marvel, though. But now that Disney yeah, owns them, too, yeah. they're probably going to kidify it, you know? No, but it's, they, Ken Feige confirmed that's where it are. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Hmm. I guess see. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. I mean to see uh Whoa. to see Ryan to see Ryan Reynolds naked. I mean I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> well, you already do in like the second movie. He's like baby legs. Like you see this little. Oh my god! I totally forgot. Oh man, it's because like I only saw part two once. That's why it's been a while. Oh. But Did you, have you guys actually seen those those clips that he's released on YouTube where Deadpool reacts to movie trailers? Yeah, oh, that's I cool. think I've seen I don't that. Know about yeah, that. yeah, they're pretty funny. So. I think I saw you know, that dude, he, he really is the perfect casting for Deadpool, dude. I will yeah. give him that, man. Yeah, yeah, that was perfect casting. <laughs> I think there's only like ever few actors, at least like for superhero roles, that like they define that hero. Like no matter what they like, whoever comes next, they'll never be able to compete. Like Hugh yeah. Jackman as Wolverine, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Uh, Chris Evans as Captain America, kind of. Well, you know what? Never mind, because they got uh, Anthony <laughs> Matthews. I, I take that back. But you know what I mean? Like, th- there's certain yeah. characters that are like just like you can't replace. Oh, here's a better one, Loki. Like, I know they have the new Loki, Sylvie, but like Loki is always gonna be Tom Hiddleston. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it is kind of true to what uh to that whole thing, you know. Just some people are perfect casting for roles that you're just like, oh my god. Yeah. You know uh, what movie I recently watched again? Which one? Uh, Gone Girl. You guys ever seen Gone Girl? Oh! Um, no, with, uh, with Ben, ben, ben Stiller. I mean, Ben Affleck. Ben, ben Affleck, yeah. I was about to say Ben Stiller. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, no. I was thinking of a whole other movie. What are you thinking I about? Watched... Uh, eh, you know, wasn't anything illegal per se, but you know, I just... Uh... Oh my god. <laughs> uh, just carry on. Just, just carry, carry, carry. Okay, okay, okay. What were you saying, Chris? I, I've never watched it, but I know, know. it's. I know uh, it's a very acclaimed. I've been wanting to watch. It. I know it's on, it's on streaming service. I've seen, I've seen it advertised. So I need to, I need to watch it soon. What were you gonna say about it? No, I was just gonna say. Is Daddy talking about um, uh, naked scenes or nude scenes? <laughs> that uh, scene with uh, Emily Bar- Emily Bonachowski. Bar- Oh my god. <laughs> she's in that movie. And she's like, uh, uh, like, I mean, you, you guys know the gist of Gone Girl, right? Like, it's like a girl uh, who disappears. Ah, okay. It's literally in the title. Yeah, it's literally, yeah. it's literally in the title. <laughs> yeah. um, so, one of the plot points in the movie is Ben Affleck was cheating on her with Emily Ratajkowski. Oh, and the whole news. Shit, I understand. So the whole news network, like all these like publications are all like after her, like outside his house. And then one night he's like super stressed out and she comes over. And she's like, you know, they're like, oh my god, I can't believe it. I love you. Ma, 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 ma. And he's just like, nah, like I can't are you fucking serious? Are you kidding me? Like I can get like 
this is gonna set off uh ruin my uh public image even more because my right. wife's missing and then you're here like i, I just kind of have that and he's and he's just there talking about all this shit and then she just takes off her shirt <laughs> and lets him hang nice. and i literally was like <laughs> mm-hmm. and he just went down he was like fuck it going back down to town and i'm just like i wouldn't blame him <laughs> i mean not Affleck as well right did ben affleck direct that movie uh I no, it was it was uh David Fincher. He did seven. Oh, okay. I th- I think it's David Fincher. Either David Fincher or David Lynch. I always confuse them. They're like they're, I know it's like two different masters, no, but I don't think it was David Lynch. I, I, I could be wrong. I mean, right, let me Google it. We have the David power Lynch is the one with for John Wick, and I don't think he did Gone Girl. I'm pretty sure it's David Fincher because I know yeah. Fincher. Yeah, it's Fincher. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Uh, he directed Seven with uh Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. You know the whole "What's in the box? Come on, I just know what's in the box." Kevin Spacey too. I don't talk about that man. Of course, Danny. (laughs) (laughs) That man no longer exists. Allegedly, he's he's actually making a comeback. Apparently. Oh, (laughs) I I heard he was. Yeah, that like he's gonna be a detective or something, right? To call like in that new movie. I forgot yeah. what it was, but that's what I heard. He make a comeback. Oh, and I think it was really ironic because it was a, the it was like a sexual prevention or assault detective. Oh my the god! So, yeah. so it's like what? <laughs> so wow, it's like it's like hey, do y'all think this is a good idea? It's like yeah, I see no problem. <laughs> oh, it's like that man. one. Uh... Oh, oh wow. Okay, yeah. This year, Loki will return in season two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Which is odd, though. Like, I wonder. Like, yeah, I'm, like kinda, I'm now like since now they announced the season two, it makes me to kind of what you were saying earlier, Chris. Like, where does it go from here? You know, like yeah. where does this? Because it is kind of like sure it's a cliffhanger for like the movies and stuff, but then like you think about it, and you're like, where does this take place then? Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. how does like where does this fit in the grand scheme of the whole MCU? Like, is this going to be um, after uh, Doctor Strange or in between, mm-hmm. like, after Doctor Strange or in between Doctor Strange and Spider-Man? You know, like, I don't know. It, I wasn't I wasn't thinking about it much, but right now, thinking about it, maybe it might be Loki trying to save Sylvie. I, I think it's just going to be a small scale, just Loki trying to save Sylvie, because we don't know where Sylvie ended up, right? Maybe she's trapped in the void. I don't know. That's, that's yeah. just what I can, you know, maybe guess. Mm, okay. Uh, I'm, I just got a trailer for um for Titans. Remember that show? Yeah. That show fucking sucks. <laughs> Wait, which show or what? what? Titans. Remember the Titans? Did, remember? Yeah, remember the it was like Teen Titans, like but live action. Remember the whole like. Meme oh, or, that like, whole bullshit! Yeah. Oh my god, like, dude, I I legit forgot about that, man. Well, what yeah. was the line? Like, it was something like, uh, something about I'm not scared of like you're not Batman. Fuck Batman. Yeah. Oh yeah. Something like yeah. that. I was like, oh yeah. my god, biggest iro ever. Like, you couldn't be more edgy. <laughs> yeah, it's... I watched the first season, but, and then, but I heard that the uh, the second season and from then on it got better. That's why they're still making it. But... I yeah, that's what I heard. I heard season two was better than the first season, but I mean anything's better than the first season. <laughs> and then season yeah, three, was it really I just that kinda, bad? I mean, yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty shit. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like season yeah. three looks a little better. Like just from the trailer, like Red Hood's in it. So oh, cool. I guess he's come. Like he's gonna be in it. But overall, I just, I don't know. I can't, they're, like, it has that CW vibe that I know some people like. I really don't. Yeah. Wait, like, C- like CW vibe in the sense of, like, um, uh, like, production value. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, production value. We're like, it looks good, but it could definitely be better sort of thing. Yeah, where it looks like, because, come on, it's... Warner Brothers, they they can pump out the money for it, and I know it's a TV show or whatever. Like, but yeah. if you look at Titans versus Loki, it's like, come on, dude. Yeah, but like, they're making the a lot more money 
with Loki, though. I know, I know, I know. But my point is, is that like, oh DC, yeah, DC is always playing catch up, and they're like, yeah. "Oh come, we're not as good as Marvel." And it's like, this is why, because you're not like. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> this is Have why. You, uh... we're not... <laughs> you ever watch Doom Patrol? I heard that was really good. I heard Doom yeah, Patrol that was like the was... highlight. Yeah, that show is fantastic. I think with Titans. But didn't that show just... get canceled? I heard. No, Doom Patrol, no. Or just ended. Like no, it just it, they're starting their new season shortly. Okay, I didn't know. I, I was curious because I I had heard this was around when they had um uh, that D, the DC streaming service that they canceled that they ended they just straight up abandoned. <laughs> yeah, and then they okay. just moved everything to HBO. That's literally what they did. They were just like, "Oh, we made a streaming service just for you, you DC fans." <laughs> and then a year later, we we're canceling the subscription. We we're so sorry. <laughs> and then they announced Not HBO bad. Max. And then, like, HBO Max basically has everything DC again. So it's just like, okay, so you're just making us pay for a different service. Essentially. Yeah. Dude, see, oh, man, I don't, like, I don't like that either. You know, for something that, you know, for one, uh, for DC, you got to go over here. For Marvel, you got to go over here. And just like, oh, my God. And it's going to get a lot worse. In the yeah, company. yeah, dude. I heard there was, there, I saw a meme that was like, this sounds a lot like television. Like, you know, yeah, like cable. Be, yeah. yeah, it's, it's eventually all going to be bought up by, like, one giant conglomerate clog how what's the word cloak con- conglomerate conglomerate right conglomerate okay. yeah clog grab grab all right welcome to our Bro. english classroom yeah class. welcome to our english <laughs> <laughs> i can't talk walk off <laughs> um where uh you know they're it's all going to be owned by one company and just they're yeah. all just going to because literally think about like hbo max like think about all the tv shows that are on there how many of those shows and certain like you know um, originals or or just straight up like you know shows from like an old era or in different yeah, services? Yeah. Like, there was Hulu. There's some on Netflix. There's some on this. There's some on that. But then like HBO Max comes in and just encapsulates all that. Same yeah. thing with Disney. You know, like you have uh, you probably have ESPN. You probably have Hulu. You probably have this and that. Whereas Disney Plus just says, here's everything. Now take it. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want to. I ain't asking. Uh, <laughs> well, I think, blah, 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 blah. Um, with Discover buying HBO, I think Discover will will uh, will combine HBO and Discover and all their Discovery Plus shows and series. That and makes stuff. sense. I think that'll be pretty good. That'll be worth I the value. It- Okay, here's a, here's a better thing into that. What do you think they're going to brand it as? Discovery Plus? <laughs> HBO joins Discovery Plus or HBO Max join, uh, Discovery Plus joins HBO Max? Uh, Discovery joins HBO Max. I feel like HBO has a, like, a, like bigger, has a bigger name. name. Yeah. yeah. I just want to see that one no. guy in the office who's like, Discovery Plus <laughs> is proud to present HBO Max with service. What do you think? <laughs> and everyone's just like, yeah, 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 that's, that's pretty good. And then everyone's like, uh, you do realize you guys are Discovery. You but, have shows like Ninety Day Fiance and <laughs> Oh God, Dancing Moms. And like, oh yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. But those things can be funny. But I'm sure they have good ratings on those shows because people. Oh my God, are you have kidding me? Those this are great. cult following on them. <laughs> I love Ninety Day Fiance. They get dude, dude, oh my God, my mother loves <laughs> Ninety Day Fiance, man. She loves all that. And you dude, see the, the recent season that they had was Big Ed, and, and uh, like that was like the like the most I've ever been invested on like reality TV shows since Jersey Shore. Yeah, I was about to say that that was, that that was the last reality TV show that I really cared about. <laughs> Like I know they have their new one, the what is it like, Jersey Jersey Shore reunion or something like that. Yeah, something yeah, like that, J- yeah. Jersey Shore washed up. Yeah, yeah. And but I, up to date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I don't know, it's not the same. Yeah, it's not. It's not the same. They're all yeah, old a, now, you know. Well, it's not even that they're old. I feel like it's just a new era. Like there was a different type of raunchiness, and you know, the early two thousands that you know nowadays just isn't the same. And obviously, yeah, they're older, so they're not doing the same stupid mistakes. But you guys proved my point because Discovery is kind of popular right now. HBO Max, their their value tarnished a lot with what they did with that um, same day release. A lot of people oh, are mad about yeah. that, and also 
Wait, wait, wait. The same day release? What are you talking about? Yeah, like the HBO movies all year releasing on theaters as well as releasing on HBO Max. Oh, okay. But I mean, and Disney so- does that too, doesn't it? Yeah, but the... I feel like a lot of people got mad at HBO a lot more than Disney because uh, they feel like Disney talked to the people that were involved in the movie and they kind of got their permission where HBO, the directors, everybody involved in the movie didn't even know that this was happening. They just, you know, said, F you, we're releasing the movie on HBO Max for free. And... That's oh, it. Like, okay. Okay, I see what you mean now. Yeah, oh, damn. And, I Okay. I don't know, like, that full extent of, of all that, really. Wow. And and a lot of people involved in those movies are mad because they're supposed to get some contracts uh, they have that they get profits from the theater. Oh, um, like royalties and whatnot? Yeah. Do you work and, for the Workers' Union, Chris? Is that why you're telling us all this? You work yes, for the I, film I do. Workers' Union? Yeah, the socialist... <laughs> Socialist, big, not big. Not ordered to be big. And that's the difference between Disney. Disney had that thirty dollar premiere access. I feel like some of that money is going to those those contracts. Yeah, but when you think about it, it's also like that's not a fair pricing because it's like if you want to stay at home and watch the movie, you gotta pay thirty bucks. Yeah, it's, it's not. But when you have the average ticket about ten bucks, um, that's a twenty dollar difference. If you have at least three people in your household gonna watch the movie, you I guess that's three bucks right there, you know. I'd say a good I'd say a good median is twenty. If it was twenty dollars, I think that's good. I think thirty. I mean, I still pay thirty. Ah, know? dude, nothing above fifteen <laughs> in my opinion. Really? Yep. Even like if they think really that you're gonna buy like snacks, like Disney snacks, like no, nah, dude, Disney, nah. Disney <laughs> snacks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. Legit, honestly, max it really like max really should be fifteen, not not twenty, not thirty, you know. Because I I, I know all that bullshit, iMac. you know. Oh, you know, like you know, like oh, it's because like y'all can get into groups, and it's like you know, what if I don't want to do that or some yeah. bullshit, you know? And then and even then, you know, it doesn't matter. It should still be like max fifteen. How much did we pay for IMAX? Like, how much did we pay for IMAX? I feel like it was fifteen, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, it was around there. It was it was around close to twenty. It was eighteen, I think. I uh, think if I remember correctly, I'd I could be wrong. Uh, I, I think it was like 16. I thought 17. Huh. Yeah, I think it was 17, 18 because it couldn't be 15 because I know that Ponce he bought my ticket because oh he bought our tickets right and yeah, yeah. so when I was trying to pay him back, all I had was 15. I didn't have dollar bills, uh, uh, so I had to get change or something. So I know it was more than 15. Only mm. dollar bills, huh? You like going to uh, <laughs> certain clubs there, Chris? <laughs> I said I didn't have dollar no, bills. No, he likes to go shopping at the dollar store, Danny. Exactly. Ah. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then afterwards, he goes to the strip club. Ah, okay. <laughs> Whatever was left over. Yeah, he, li- he throws pennies at him. Dance, <laughs> dance for me. You're being productive. You're being productive. <laughs> He's recycling. But they can't... Like, I wouldn't pay 30 bucks... Um, I wouldn't pay either maybe twenty. I'm not sure about twenty, but I wouldn't definitely. I wouldn't pay thirty. But they have to pay. They have to charge thirty because that's how they can even make any money. Yeah, like, no, really no, no I mean, I know I the it. reason why they're doing yeah. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just, saying, I'm just saying why I'm not personal. going to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get preference. you. Uh, personal preference, I would say I would like twenty. But yeah, I I understand why they they you know they charge tickets. Well, the Premier X is for 30. I get it. Yeah. But with that, you know, Black Widow had a big box office this weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Black Widow was okay. It was okay. That's all I can, all okay. I can say. Oh, you saw it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I paid $30 for Premier <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I spit on you. <laughs> no. Yeah. It was a t- yeah. How can, you, how can you do that, Justin, when you have I all know, these theaters in San Antonio? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> God damn it, dude. I mean, you know what? Hey, your money, man. It's your money. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay, at the, mo- at the time of it happening, I was home. 
I was really lazy and tired. You were alone. Um, I was alone. <laughs> I was alone. That was a, that was a big thing. I was alone, and I, I was like, you, you know alone. what? I watch. I watched the movie. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, I watched it yesterday. Got it. Okay. Got it for five dollars discount day $5. in my theater. <laughs> Oh, you fucking oh yeah, yeah, those Tuesday discounts. <laughs> rub it in, yeah. Chris. Rub it in. I paid thirty and you paid five. Rub it in, okay? For a theater experience, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what an rough. ass! What an <laughs> ass! He's rubbing it in my face. Yeah, yeah, it's true. He actually got the full experience, man. He did. He got a better experience. He had a crowd of people. I'm here with my dogs. Going, <laughs> I'm just like, God damn it! Shut up. And you're paying Black Widow. Um. <laughs> I thought it was better than okay. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was entertaining. The story was, it's not very good, but I loved the the family, the family dynamic. Um, yeah, dynamic of it. It was funny. It was kind of if you have siblings, kind of can um, you kind of um, kind of relate with that dynamic as well. So I thought it was pretty good. The action was kind of Fast and Furious action. It was kind of. Uh, funny seeing that type of action, um, but it was it was entertaining. I liked it. I don't know. I will say this: I think the standouts was David Harbor, yeah, and Florence Florence Pews. I think that's her name, Florence Pews. She was the uh, uh, Elena yes. mm-hmm. sister. Um, I yeah, I thought those two were fantastic in this. I think. I know it, it sounds kind of bad, but it's like even after 10 years after getting her own movie, it still isn't her movie, if that makes sense. Mm, okay, I get I feel like sure. I feel like this movie really was more of a setup to Yelena's story so that we can follow her in the future as the new Black Widow. Oh, like essentially like uh, like to pass the tor- torch and whatnot? Yeah, like I feel like this... Like obviously, Scarlett Johansson's the star of this film, you know. Yeah. It's, and her, and you know the t- the title of it's Black Widow. But when you come to realize that every woman in this film is a Black Widow, you see, oh, it doesn't necessarily mean our Black Widow. It just means any Black Widow. Mm, okay. Okay. Damn, that's pretty whack, dude. I mean, I mean, like, I, I know they've kind of, like, set it up in other movies, you know, that it's not just her or, you know, like, it wasn't her that just trained specifically like that. But, I mean, at, you know, as, as far as the movies and shows go, she was the only Black Widow. Or, or, or like, it's called, you know, like, the only one of her kind sort of thing. So, it's not, so like, now they're doing that, it's like, eh, I guess. But, I, eh. well, So, well, well, the, the way the, like, maybe I have a fault, like, a faulty memory, a false memory, a faulty memory of, uh, of how they explain her origins in other in the earlier movies. I think it, it was, was Age of Ultron is when they like gave kind of like the most background of her and all that. Yeah. So from what I remember is that sh- there were always other Black Widows. The only difference yeah. was she stopped the program for them to make more. But in this movie, which is a prequel which takes place between Civil War and Infinity War, um, oh, I was about to ask that. So it's a prequel then? Yes, it's it is a prequel. prequel. It takes place. Okay. Between, it literally takes place after Civil War. Like literally, like not moments, but like a yeah. little bit, a little while after Civil War. It's all when right, they're right. on the run. Run from yeah, the they're on the run. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, like, okay, here's a be- here's a, a better way to like to. Uh, it's crazy that when you really think about this, this movie takes place right after she zaps. Black Panther when he's about to like attack Bucky when Bucky and Steve are about to fly off in the jet. Yeah. It takes place literally right after that, like that scene with uh that whole little thing and then it ends with it taking place right before Steve goes to bust out uh Falcon and Ant-Man and everyone else from the Oh from, uh, wow. That's the cool. Person. So it literally takes place between that span of time, which is crazy to think about because then it makes me think, like, how long did Civil War really take place? But um, uh, Okay, I get you, I get you. You know, 
because in the movie they kind of in it there, or in the in the Civil War movie, like they just kind of in it there. But I get you, you know, like how long the like the story actually continued after that. I get you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think the movie was good. I thought it was okay. I thought there was some plot twist. I mean, do you want to get into spoilers, Chris? I mean, yeah, go for it. Go for it. it. Yeah. Yeah, go okay. For yeah. It. I guess I was asking more for Chris because I know Danny doesn't really care. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Just real quick before you get into spoilers, I agree that that Scarlett Johansson kind of took a back seat in this movie. I yeah, think that's because of the family. They had a bunch of characters. They had a lot to put in this movie, and yeah. so I think with all those characters introduced, all those characters having their time, and you falling in love with David Harbor, um, I think maybe you took you know that spotlight away from Scarlett Johansson, and of course we're setting up. Lena as well. I think he still had those action, action, those um, kind of like set those. Uh, what was that set pieces like those yeah, action set pieces, pieces? Yeah, with for Sky Johansson, and you had her as eventual hero, right? So, but we could get into spoilers. Yeah, go for it. Um, okay, so I thought the plot twist with Taskmaster was good. I really liked it. I did not see that coming. I, I did not once think, oh, that's going to be the daughter that Black Widow blew up. Spoiler alert. Right. I do, even though we said it already, Black Widow blows up a kid. <laughs> uh, okay. And so you, you think that she died, and then at the end, you know, the the big Russian bad guy, I have, thank you for my family. And he, like, flips a switch, and then, like, Taskmaster takes off his helmet, and it's, like, his daughter. And you're like, oh, she survived? She's a woman. I mean, he's a woman. <laughs> I want to say he's a woman. <laughs> and you're just like, whoa, that's crazy. I thought that twist was good. I think to what you said, Chris, about the whole um, like there's there's a lot of characters. I th- like you know, that she took a backseat because of like all the all the characters. I kind of do agree, but I also think they wrote some of the better lines and things to other like. To, again to like david harbour and yelena like when she does the whole joke of, when she's joking a, a black widow like scar johansson going like what's that thing you do when you fight where you land on all fours and you whip <laughs> your hair back up yeah. like you're, that's an action pose right you're such a poser <laughs> like that I joke like, throughout the whole movie was funny yeah. like it always I landed like, yeah i felt like it was satire like kind of making fun of like kind of like this 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 action this thing that you've been doing since like posing. the second iron man movie yeah <laughs> I thought okay. that was cool. Um, I thought the villain was okay. Maybe let me get your opinion on this, Chris, because I maybe I might be getting the wrong vibes. Did you feel like the end, the like the the villain was like supposed to be a uh like a metaphor for like powerful men, like in Hollywood? Um, like the idea that this. This big fat guy who looks like Harvey Weinstein is like, <laughs> like controlling women. I didn't think about it like that when I watched it, but now that you're saying it, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I felt really. I thought I felt like it was intentional. Like I felt like they were doing this intentionally. Like maybe again, it's just a product of the times and all the stuff that happened with Cosby. You know the hey hey hey, like, stupid shit. We 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 know that Scarlett Johansson is a. Is kind of a a fighting force against that, yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's why I, that's what I'm thinking. Like maybe that had to do a little input on it because I know she was an executive producer. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. Oh really? Producer. Yeah, she's an executive producer. Same thing. Well, with, I um, mean, I guess, I guess. Like Tom um, Hiddleston and Loki. He, I know he's an executive producer on that show too. I think all the all the ones that they got from the movies are executive producers. I think that was their way to get them all into are they? these shows. Yeah. Are you sure? Because you know, I like that, I, I, that, I don't know. It could be wrong. Makes I, know, sense. You know, I know about you know, like, Hansen. like how can we convince him to do this? It's like yeah. you know, give him executive roles. That was it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm only saying because I saw an interview where they meant like Kevin Feige mentioned that Scarlett Johansson and Tom Hiddleston were executive producers. So I don't know about you know Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie and Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany, like if they were executive producers on their shows. But from what I was told, like, told, like, uh, yes, yeah, Kevin Feige told me, as I saw 
a video Marvel came right up to your door <laughs> it was like hey you want to do an interview with Kevin Feige uh, I was about to say what can I say spaghetti <laughs> Kevin Spaghetti uh, he wanted me to do an interview with him and I said no I'm too good for you Kevin Spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti. God damn it. I'm more of a linguini guy, but alright, go for it. <laughs> um, but overall I thought the film was okay. What did you think of the end credit thing though, Chris? The whole like Yelena's gonna go after a uh, Hawkeye now. Uh, Hawkeye. Um got setting up what the Hawkeye series. I always wondered what the Hawkeye series was gonna be about. I guess maybe You're doing a series for him too. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. Literally dude, series, series for everyone, for every, huh? Yeah, it's a literal <laughs> series for every side character in the in the movies. Is it called Hawkeye? Is it called Bishop? It's just Hawkeye. Okay. Um, I thought it was gonna be like a like a Karate Kid type of movie. Like he's gonna be the the mentor, and she's gonna be like, oh, like he's gonna like she's gonna have the potential to be a a great archer, and he's gonna be like, oh, I'll teach you how to do it. I think it is. I think, I think the villain is going to be probably her because I, I don't think Hawkeye will be in, in any mo- any other movies. I think Hawkeye is pretty much done. Yeah. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, no, I mean, it, that would make the most sense because in Endgame, he's like, I just want my family back, man. And now he yeah. has them back. So it's like, you know, yeah. Yeah. enjoy the time with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said that. Um, pick- Dom. I want to do it with my family. <laughs> Thanos may be strong, but nothing stronger than family. Chick, chick. I mean, the, click. Reason, the reason why I couldn't like say yes definitively about um, like what you said about the villain um, is because I don't really know the the storyline of Black Widow. Like from the comics, I don't know how these Russian spies, you know acted out if they were acting out because they were under control like how we saw in the movie or was I, I it think just... that's a, I think that's a thing in the movie cuz like I'm like in the comics they're just trained assassins like that like that's literally just you know comic right. not lazy writing but it, it's just a type of it like, is. Like, I, I wait no in the in the movies <clears throat> it wasn't my control like wasn't it just like super strict like punishments and all that sort of no. stuff yeah so that's so that's the thing so apparently in uh, uh, Scar Johansson's, yeah. I'm just gonna use her real name because I uh, I forget her yeah, Natasha. 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 There we go. Natasha. Natasha. Sorry, I was gonna call her Natalie, but I'm like that's not right. <laughs> uh, Natasha. Uh, Natasha's generation was taught that way, where they were just uh, extremely okay, okay. conditioned to be killing ruthless machines. Uh-huh. Whereas this newer generation are straight up mind control, like they they spray like I don't know how it, the the film doesn't really explain it. Yeah, it's, a, well. it's a chemical. It's a chemical. Bio, I thought it was bio, like, biochemical, okay. isn't it? The biochemical I, I think, or something like that. I don't know. They they just, they just kind of show the pig because there's a part in the movie where they show a pig and they have the pig. You know, they they she like stops the pig's uh lungs, like she shuts down his lungs so he can't breathe. And you it's see like the a chemical, it's like a chemical that goes into your brain, and con- and can, you can control them. Basically. Yeah, so it's kind of like mind control. You know, you spray a little gas, and oh my god, you want me to go where? You want me to bend over? Okay. <laughs> Sounds uh kind of nefarious there, Justin. Huh? <laughs> no, Sounds we're good. Kind of nefarious. No. I think Danny's working on it right now as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Danny's been allowed. Like as we're talking to Danny, he's like mixing yeah. chemicals. Yeah, I just need a bit more fluorine, but uh, I mean, uh, anyways, <laughs> man, that's all good. Hey, hey, uh, oh, so uh, next topic, what, what was that? Man? Yeah, <laughs> stupid. Um, but yeah, I think like that's just the, the how they explain it. Like that's that's the whole driving force of the movie. The the whole driving force of the movies is to free the other widows from mind control. Mm, okay, yeah. and that's, that's why I was like, thinking. What were you gonna say? Okay. Now what? <laughs> yeah, I felt like it was lazy writing. Like I didn't like that part. Like I didn't like that 
kind of that story element. That's why I said that the story was okay. Uh, but why I find this movie impactful and entertaining is because, like I said, the family, I feel like... Uh, dynamic. Yeah, the, the family dynamic. And then also Natasha kind of redeeming herself. Brain, you know... Hey, okay, that, that I don't know about because we kind of had a redeeming already with two other movies before this. Oh, That's yeah, true. but... But I think, like me, myself, I had no idea what Natasha's storyline was. I never even, yeah. like, I feel like in the movies, they went yeah. away so far from her story, like, that she was even a Russian spy. Like, I felt like somebody, if you asked anybody who Natasha is or was during the Avengers She's movies, a sexy girl with yeah, a Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that can fight, is good with shooting and stuff like that. They, nobody would have... Probably ninety percent of the people you talked to that had no idea about the comics or really kind of knew anything apart from the movies would have told you that she was a Russian spy. I think they would have. Am forgot. I the only one? That I'm I'm thinking about it now that you're talking about this. Am I the only one realizing how useless she really is in the Avengers, like the original <laughs> Avengers? Like, hey, she can have... shoot really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like I like how you have a god from space. You have yeah. a giant green giant. You have the giant, the jolly green giant. You have yeah. a super soldier. You have a gene, a uh, just a genius. And then I, I know people like to shut on Hawkeye, but the guy's accurate as fuck, like yeah. super accurate, like with anything. Like you can give him a gun and he, he's accurate with it. But he chooses to use bows and arrows because for whatever reason, <laughs> he's just that good. Yeah, <laughs> Natasha, she's just a girl. Who can be like I can I I I like who's like I can make you fall in love with me. Ooh, look at me, look at my boobies. And then you're like, whoa, this is crazy. And then she like does a cat flip where she spins you around and sends you off the window. Hey, but I mean, I she does her job. I'll give her that. She does her job, but literally what I'm describing is the literal first scene in the movie when you see her tied up and the guys are like oh baby you oh, look very yeah, sexy yeah. we're gonna throw you yeah. off the, the window and then she's like oh we'll come a little closer and then she like kicks all their asses and the guys are like yeah. oh I thought I was gonna get laid uh, and he like just falls asleep I think maybe she can like be classified as a strategist maybe like she should have that mind of being a strategist uh, but I think that's why Joss Whedon didn't even want um Natasha. She he wanted uh, what's the the girl's name? Um, Wasp. She want he wanted Wasp to be an Avenger from the beginning. He didn't want really. Natasha. Yeah, jo- uh, Kevin Feige was the one that told him we're not having Wasp right now. We're having we're having Black Widow. Black Widow. Yeah. Because like because yeah because like the only thing I I will give Nat is she knows how to infiltrate because again she's a yeah. spy so mm-hmm. that's something good. But again, when you're the Avengers, you're not exactly creeping around the corner, you know, hiding in the air vents. You're just breaking down doors, being like, hey, what's up, dude? Kind of kick your ass. And uh, but, I mean, she did have that scene with Loki where she extracts information out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's what so... I mean. That's what I mean. Like, she's a good, like, spy. Like, she's great. She's a great spy. No, but, dude, like, when you're <laughs> putting her, like, with. She's a good. Armies, um, she's great for uh, exposition. There we go. Exposition? Yeah, it's a great explaining what we gotta do, what everyone else has to do. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> there's a giant green plo- uh, plodo, porto. We gotta blow it up. Plodo. <laughs> we wouldn't have the the connection that she has with Captain America. I think maybe she was the closest to what Captain America is, right? I, like yeah, yeah. kind of grounded. I think the one movie that really kind of sh- proved, because like up to Avengers. Like, you kind of question, why do we need her? And then Winter Soldier kind of was like, this is why. And you're like, oh, okay, she's good at being a spy. Mm -hmm. Because you kind of forget that. Because, again, you have giant robots, giant monsters, gods from space, Nazis, and then you just have girl with guns. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, yeah. Girl with guns with a mysterious past. And so... With red hair. I think it's cool that, you know, after all these years, people actually now now know her backstory and but were people oh, see, really but, but, but here, here comes the question that's a, that's a good question did uh did marvel slash disney do it because they really wanted to or to uh, to appease the 
the SJW crowd too. Like, oh, look, uh, our first real big female movie, you know? I or feel like this movie, movie. This, fe- this female movie. <laughs> hey, don't forget Captain Marvel. Yeah, don't forget Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was our first hero movie. You fucking oh pig. my god, I totally forgot. About it. <laughs> you fucking pig. I didn't like. Oh, Captain Marvel. dude, I, I legit forgot about yeah, Brie Larson and her terrible. I, lo- I, 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 like Captain Marvel and this movie have a lot in common and and how I felt. And I, I you know who was say... truly loses, dude? Not Black Widow. Her, dude. Her in uh, Endgame. She didn't. She literally only came for what, like two scenes. <laughs> okay, from what I understand. They film Infinity War and Endgame back to back. Then okay. after she after she filmed that, she did her movie. Yeah. So uh, up to that right, point, right. so up to that point, they never they didn't really establish her character. They just said, "Oh, she's gonna be really strong," and that's it. See, see, this is what I mean. That's why I said like that they make Black Widow because they really wanted to or to appease just the SJWs to be like, "Oh, look, uh, another big movie," you know, just like. But I think- <sighs> I think even if they were trying to do that, like this movie came out ten years too late. I think this movie should have yeah, came out between. Yeah. Like I really feel this movie would have had an impact if it came between, uh, af- like between Civil War, and Doctor Strange. Like that, mm. that's my honest opinion. If this movie came between Doctor Strange and and Civil War, I think the fan reception of this would be spectacular. And not to say that that it does. It's not a good movie. I'm not saying this movie isn't good. I don't think this movie. You know. Maybe when you watch it, you're like, oh, look, I'm looking at Donnie to watch, but like, oh, when the fucking, when's it going to be over? Like, it's a good movie. I just yeah. think that there are stuff in this movie that really does kind of bog it down a bit where you kind of, like, you kind of know what's going to happen. Like, maybe that's the, the the Marvel formula at this point, but I feel like there's Marvel movies that are able to, like, that follow that formula, but still go above and beyond it. Like, Thor Ragnarok. I think of. Mm. Okay, okay. Or Endgame, you know, or Infinity War. I feel like it would have been better to do her movie probably right after Age of Ultron, because you know, like that, you know, like that could have been the good intro from Age of Ultron. Sure. Oh, what? She's she, she was a trained spy, blah, blah blah, and then from there, you know, they can really like elaborate. Yeah. But uh, yeah, hey, you're right, dude. They're like ten years too late. I feel you. you know? Like, yeah, they really are, because throughout this movie. I would find myself be like, oh my god, is she gonna make it? I'm like, what the fuck? She dies in Endgame. Of course she's gonna make it. And I, I, like, I would, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I think that's what ruined it. Like, that's literally, to me, what ruined the the momentum for this movie. Like, if anything, I was wondering what was gonna happen to, like, uh, Yelena or the Red Guardian or the other <laughs> the lady, Red, like, yeah. Red Guardian like, was funny. <laughs> Alex Harvey. Yeah, he was really funny. Yeah. Like, um, those characters, I was wondering what, the, what was going to happen to them because you don't see them after this movie, right? But they kind of ex- they kind of explain why they're not in you know any other Marvel movie afterwards. So it was like, okay, I get it. But I think I think they didn't have a story, like 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 we talked about. Kind of the story up to Age of Ultron was that she was not being mind controlled, like so the. Where would the movie go without the mind control? Um, and also, um, it's they gotta stop. A, they have to stop. 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 They have to stop Harvey Weinstein, Chris. Stop <laughs> that's Weinstein. That's what they have to stop. That's the whole part of the movie. They gotta stop Harvey like, Russian Harvey like Weinstein. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a wacky story, like, and people cannot uh, get attached. Yeah, get attached because it's a Russian, the Russian spies. Like I don't know, I don't, I just, I don't know about that. I feel like the Americans. Have you ever seen the Americans on FX? No, I haven't seen that one. That's a great show. That's literally what the beginning of like the first ten minutes of this movie basically based it off, and obviously oh, yeah. real world events. You know, like Russian spies in in American soil and vice versa. Well, oh, that's yeah. that's the thing though. Like Russian spies were a big thing, and people were all scared of Russian spies um, at you know some point in our history, and so that's why I just. I don't know. I don't know if people could have gone behind an Avenger that was a Russian spy like this, that was a ruthless killer and stuff like that, and then have her keep on being an Avenger. You know? Mm. And and then, like I said, like if you don't have that mind control uh, um, aspect of this movie, then what do you have? You just have people that are loyal. 
And how do you break that loyalty? In one I get that. Release, you know? I can see what you mean. I can see what you're going for. Because I was gonna, I was gonna counteract that by saying, well, you could say that about any movie. Like you could be like Scott Pilgrim versus the World. You take off Ramona Flowers, and what, what does Scott Pilgrim do? He's just there, like, oh, I'm dating a high schooler. I just recently saw a movie, man. Oh man, <laughs> the first time. Yeah, first time, but uh, I, it, 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 but I saw it high, and yo, <laughs> that's that's the movie to watch high as hell, man. Because <laughs> all the visuals, the music, it's just like yo, this is goddamn perfect. <laughs> My favorite part of that movie will always be when the his girlfriend, his high school girlfriend, comes in. Well, it's not even his girlfriend; it's just the high school, the high schooler he's he's with. Oh, okay. shows up at his door. And she's like, is Scott home? And his friend covers the door. <laughs> and then he like jumps through, <laughs> he through the window. Oh, he just window. left. Yeah, yeah that, that, oh, and then he's like in the background walking. Yeah. Oh my god, that was so fucking funny. Like that scene alone makes that movie great. And I watched that movie too, too long ago to remember anything. I need to watch it again. <laughs> I don't even remember, like, I, the only thing I remember was that part, the part where the, the Indian guys like singing his song with the vampire girls and then like the vampire girls are coming up i'm gonna get canceled for that yeah <laughs> god damn it I was, a bit, row. I, I, I was barely about to start my career and my career got canceled <laughs> twice twice <laughs> um speaking of like i think i i, I kind of had a good segue and i fucked it up I really had a good yeah, segue and I fucked yeah, up. Like, I, had a, I had a brain fart and I was like, eh, uh, uh. Um, what was it again? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I recently rewatched Iron Man 2. Uh-huh. It's been a while. And I forgot how interesting that movie is. <laughs> Interesting lack of words or interesting mean, as like... in like like I don't know, like when you really think about it, like that movie was a perfect is a perfect example of sequel a uh, sequel itis. Sequelitis, sequelitis. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Where yeah. it does everything the first movie did but twice as much. And then mm. it also at the same time ruins the movie because of it in a weird way because it's like um you have that you have more roadie you have the the russian yeah mickey rooney who's a russian bad guy and like who builds a a suit of armor with a box of scraps in an apartment (laughs) um not, not in a cave and then Elon shows up for a minute for some reason. Oh uh, yeah. Like I don't know. Didn't Elon say, movie, uh, but... "Hey Tony, if you ever stuck in space, give me a call." And he was stuck in yeah. space, and he never gave him the call, dude. So, uh, that just confirms Elon's in space right now, <laughs> waiting for Tony Stark. I think it really comes down that if you really look at that, most of the Marvel movies they don't have a really good story. I think what makes them is. Whoa, like whoa, whoa, movie. Chris, where did you and, get... I, I went from... <laughs> <laughs> I meant to you, the story sucks. You yeah, know, it's, it does. It's not very good. I, okay, but, I will say this. The only saving grace when I watched those movies was never Scarlet even Branson. a story. <laughs> no, well, okay, besides that, besides that, besides that. The only saving grace besides that, to me, when I watched those movies when I was younger, was um, the armor. The suits of armor. Those, yeah, the suits of armor cool. always interested me. Like I can't yeah. give a rat's ass about what Tony's problems were. I was like, oh, is that a suit that's also a suitcase that goes around okay. his whole body? That's cool. Yeah. And then same thing with Iron Man 3 where you made like 40 different Iron Man yeah. suits. <laughs> but see, what I liked about it is that like if you um because there was a book I read. So yeah, I'm a fucking nerd. I read a book. Uh, <laughs> if you read the if you read the book on the different armors or the history behind all the armors that are in that movie, you know, in the movie, yeah. they're just kind of like, he's just like, oh, I brought my armor, my Iron Legion. Okay, they're going to fight. Bye-bye. And he just, you know, the movie goes on. Like, it doesn't mention the suits. 
But if you read the lore, you start to realize, and I mean, this is just since day one of Iron Man, every suit he makes is basically an improvement of the last, and whatever flaws are in that suit, he improves in the next. Hmm. And it, it it just goes on and on and yeah. on. Like literally, if you like, because it's kind of hard to like realize that. Because if you're in real time watching these movies, there's like two three year gaps between them, and you kind of forget, you know, yeah. what was a weakness with that one suit, or what's what was so special about this suit that's different than that suit. So Man. by the time we're at like the nano suit at Endgame, yeah. okay. and all the things that suit has, and you look at back at all the other Iron Man suits that he has, you're like. Oh, okay. I can see how he ended up here and started there. Not just because, oh, he's Tony Stark and he's super smart. It's but besides I, I, that. I agree with that. But really, just what it really went down from is that he had a normal suit that he made by hand. And then 10 years later, he had a suit that was made by Nanotech. This wonderful fake science stuff. <laughs> You trying to shit on Iron Man, Chris, right now? Are you really I trying to shit Iron on Man. Iron Man? I love Iron Man. It doesn't sound like I'm you love Iron Man. It sounds that. like you're shitting on him. <laughs> I'm just saying that you can make any suit better with fake technology called nanotech that when you have a wound, big as a wound that would kill you, this fake technology can heal you. <laughs> you have a problem with this fake technology, Chris, because it <laughs> saved his life. You hear me? It saved his life. Yep. Saved his life, man. <laughs> Chris wants saying, to, you hear that, everybody? Chris wanted Iron Man to die on the moon. Hey, hey, this He's guy is trying to be logical. <sighs> <laughs> Actually, I had like a, a laugh button, to, like a, a sound, uh, like what is it, a sound bar of like a laughing. Oh, like Ken's <laughs> laughter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like they have in like iCarly where they're like, ah <laughs> <laughs> I Dude, they, oh my god, that, that that's honestly why I hate modern shows because like they just put a laugh track over anything. They're like, oh hey yeah. mom, ha, hey dad, ha. it's like what? It's, it's like like they're not even saying anything funny. They're just it's so Uh-oh. dumb, dude. I guess I spilled the milk. That's what we're gonna have for our next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You bet your ass we are. We're going to have the reality TV show podcast tomorrow. Oh, God. I mean, tomorrow, next week. <laughs> I'm Danny D. Uh, Danny D. Oh, my yeah, you know, God. Going for a Jersey Shore, man. Eh? No, you know what the fuck you did. What? No, I did, did what? Did what? Okay, whatever. We're moving on. Bro, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. Uh, okay, fine, fine. I, I don't see what's going on. Okay. When you're at the Jersey Shore, you're going to be with your friend Johnny Sins? Yeah. Oh. Uh, see, I wasn't even thinking about that. Uh, Yeah, dude. Hey, that's a cool dude. Hey, that guy has lived many careers, all right? He's been a construction worker, a mechanic, yeah, dude, mechanic a lawyer, doctor, a doctor. Long f- <laughs> his mother long must be so proud here. of him. Astronaut. Dude, I wonder if his mom has, like, every picture of him, like, in those oh different, my God. like, outfits. <laughs> like, this is my son. He's an astronaut. When he's not doing, when he's not in space, he's on the ground saving people's lives at a hospital. And when he's got free time on that, he's a construction worker building houses for the needy. Dude, oh, man, it must be so... <sighs> it must be I so... Think they like... live their lives. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I, I'm, I'm trying to say, I'm like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, uh, I mean, I guess weird, public? right? It must be so weird being, being the, the mother or, you know, just be like directly related to, to someone that's that big in the porn industry, you know? I feel like it's weirder for a parent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, you know what? I won't say parent. I would say surrounding family members because mm. I'm pretty sure I'm, I, I, I could be wrong, but this is just my su- assumption. I'm pretty sure most of them told their parents what they're doing. And most of the parents are like, as long as you're making money, I don't give a shit what you do. If you're making like a million dollars, who cares? I feel weirder if you're the cousin of Johnny Sins and you're like, oh, you know, I I got a cousin who's a doctor. Oh, yeah, what's his name? (laughs) Uh, His name is Johnny. No, dude, it must be worse to be a sibling. Because your parents might not really watch for him, but your siblings 
Oh, yeah. Probably do, and then to see like your, you know, your brother sister like front page every time. Yeah, front page, fully nude. It's just like ah. they, they probably have to buy the, the the subscription services. Like they have to pay to have them blocked from their app, like, <laughs> from their recommended <laughs> to filter them out. <laughs> yeah, to filter them out. Like that's the only way. Like it's like, oh, if you want to uh, filter out dude. certain actresses and actors, you have to pay nine ninety nine ninety nine every month. <laughs> And you're like, oh no, boy, I, well, I guess I, if I want to keep my sanity, I'll pay the nine ninety nine ninety nine a month. Oh, uh, dude. But you know, it's it's probably worse on the to call it like uh like having a daughter in porn because she's getting plowed. You know, yeah, you know, to get plowed by five different guys at the same time. It's just, Especially if like you're like Piper. I don't know if I want to see that, you know. Or you know, or, or, wait, how do you feel like yeah. the, the father feels? Like he pictures dude, a little yeah. girl. Like, oh. hey, daddy, I want to, like, buy some some Legos or buy a doll. He's like, yeah, sure, sweetie. And then 20 yeah. years later, she's, like, fucking being rammed by, like, five guys. And, like, <laughs> what have I raised? Yeah, dude, legit, man. Oh, man, that must really suck. Do you think it's the parents' fault? Like, not to say, like, it's bad to be in that industry. No, no, it, I, I, I get it's you. An industry, no, it's... it's an industry that, like, there's a reason why it exists. Because people, you know. Yeah. Search for it, but I guess yeah. it's more of like, what do you think leads people down that path? Do you think it's bad parenting? You know, like parents being like, or like <sighs> just a, like the surroundings. No, you know, I think the main thing is probably just the money aspect of it, or like the kind of I, w- I wouldn't say the what well, like not fame, but the uh, yeah, I would say like the money and and possible fame out of it. You know, say like, hey, you know, I won't be. A lister, but people will know me. I'll be making good money. I don't you make think that's a... so weird? Because I feel like when you do that, you get harassment from people. I mean, I've yeah, heard, I've heard because yeah. I've heard plenty of stories of like actresses and actors in that industry who are like, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna drink some." I went to a bar or like a, a Starbucks to get coffee, and then a random guy or girl is like, "Hey, you wanna fuck? You wanna fuck me?" And it's just like that, like just because she they do that. In the, as a profession, doesn't mean they're horny all the time. Yeah, you know I, mean? I get you. I get you. Because I, I, I feel like that, like that kind of attention, warrants unwanted behavior from a certain group of individuals. Yeah. More so than others, like any other industry, like you know, like as much as we see Scar Johansson flipping around in cat suits, no one's like, hey, honey, you not even fuck. Like no one's doing that. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, dude, I I want to say. I, Part of the biggest reason, like, you know, like, compared to a lot of other, or just, like, a lot of other fields, I, I want to say maybe it's, the, you know, the money. They're, hey, you know, just do this one scene, thousand bucks. You're like, oh, wow, just two hours of my day, make a thousand bucks. But do you think, yeah, why not, mm-hmm. you know? I guess that's true. The money's a big thing. But do you ever think they, like, consider what happens afterwards? See, that's part of the problem. Since most of these get in pretty young, you know, 18, 19, 20, you know, I don't think they think it that far through, you know, or they think, oh, just just maybe a, uh, you know, just a few videos and that's it or something. But then it turns into a lifelong thing, or they just get like that. Like I think of that, like, like that that girl with the army guy. Remember? Uh, no. The one who who the one what? like it was a, it was a big thing of like this guy who was going to the military and he took uh-huh. a picture with his girlfriend and the girlfriend's like, oh my god, I love him and and I would never cheat on him. And then, like, apparently, like, that same day, because she's wearing the exact same clothes from that picture in the video, she shot a video. Oh, bro. And they sent it to the guy, and she broke up with him. And then they did another video where they they talked to her again. She's like, oh, wow, you got pretty popular, right? And then she's, like, kind of awkward about it, where she's like, "Uh yeah. yeah." Uh And and that second time, it felt felt like she was just doubling down because she had nowhere else to go. Oh, wow. See, see, that's kind of what I mean, you know, like, you just kind of get stuck in there because, you know, it's the one-time thing. Or, or, uh, worse yet, like, maybe they get into drugs, you know? You know? Where it's just, I heard a lot of, I heard a lot of them like that, like, um, I forgot what's her face, but one of them, one of the big ones, apparently she was, like, she did it, like, heroin and meth. Oh, oh, I know, um, I think I just recently read something about that, too, uh, I don't know. We're talking about the same one, but the one I read that was sort of along the lines uh, was her name or her stage name was a uh, Dakota Sky. No, yeah. no, no. The one I'm talking about was uh, Lana Rhodes. 
Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, well, she said that she she was like a drug not not a drug mule, but I guess you could say she was a drug. She said because she 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 has a podcast, and she was uh-huh. like, I I did drugs. Like she was a drug mule and, and whatever. She and like I hear this like you hear these things these things that she's saying, and you look at her and you're like I could never fucking imagine you doing those things. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, she's pretty. You know, she's pretty pretty. Yeah. But like even then, it's like uh, it's like Chris. I, I know like I, I don't, I'm not gonna put a picture of Chris up and be like, hey, this is Chris, guys. Look at her, Chris, everybody. Like if Chris was like, yeah, I stuff, I stuff bags of drugs up my butt, I'd be like, <laughs> whoa, Chris, I wouldn't picture that from you. Like, yeah, I do yeah. it for lots of money. Like it, it, oh. it's like, oh, it's, it's like out of character. It's like that type of thing where it's stupid. It's like where it's out of character. Like you just wouldn't picture it. Right. Yeah. Huh. You know that explains a lot. <laughs> if she was a drug mule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some people. No wonder he. Desperate for the money, yeah, or yeah. that too, man. Desperation. Yeah, you got into the round, the wrong crowd. I've yeah. heard stories where, where some people, like some women or even guys, I think I've heard a story about that. Is that you're like a stripper, and uh, somebody in the industry sees you, and they have a talk with you, mm-hmm. tell you about you know kind of the industry, and we would like I've to heard have that. you. Hey, and, sweetie, how would you like to make some real money? Yeah, I know. <laughs> And then they start with one, and, you know, if it's popular, they become a big thing. And then they keep doing it and doing it. And then, But see, I think that's the, the, that's the sad thing about it, because you have to, like, get crazier and crazier, I, I feel like, anyways, to, like, maintain relevance. Because if not, you get less jobs. Because it's yeah, like with any industry. That's kind of true. Like, that's it, kind of true. Like, like it's yeah. like with any actor, you know? Like, you might start out in, like, this, or, like, singer, you know? You have this big breakout song. That's like a one hit wonder, and it was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. And then you release other songs, and I was like, ah, I mean, it's not as good as that one video you did, that one song you did. And right. then you're just playing catch up for the rest of your life because you're just trying to go back to doing what you hit at your peak or what yeah. seemed like your peak. I get yeah, you. Definitely. Yeah, I guess, you know, like where they start off, you know, just like, oh, amateur porn, you know, but then towards towards the end or towards like you know like the later part of the career it's like <laughs> five guys one gal sort of thing it's like jesus christ you know? yeah it's like five guys <laughs> one girl and a horse and you're like whoa whoa <laughs> this is crazy. whoa justin what are you watching brother <laughs> no, i'm not watching it. i'm just talking about what you know like how crazy people get yeah but i also funny think it's how... like what or you say chris <laughs> i was gonna say it's funny how this was this this episode was supposed to be Marvel. <laughs> um, we got a two porn industry. <laughs> hey, this hey, stuff's there's, important. There's, pa- there's right. parodies. There's parodies, Chris. It can parodies. be there. There's parodies. No, I think the only parody is that Danny wanted to filthy in the beginning of the episode. And we got the <laughs> filthy. <laughs> man's got to do what man's got to do. He's got he, he's got a dream that one day <laughs> there'll be a film like no other. <laughs> Legit, man. And I want Roman Polanski to film it. Oh my god, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Look at that asshole in France or wherever he is. Yeah. Um, I guess we're getting close to like the pretty long episode. I think it's about like an hour plus at this point. So, you know, in the usual typical... I, I can't say typical because we only did it like one time. But, yeah. uh, we're going to end every... Uh, podcast episode talking about you know a dumb criminal you know fellow smooth brains out there who got caught doing stuff that you know a normal person would kind of be like you know what that's not that's not a smart thing to do mm, yeah so I, I got this one it takes place in New York I can pull it up so I got oh actually let me rephrase that not New York New Jersey and the oh, headline is Jesus. New Jersey teens caught dumping murder victim in Pennsylvania woods after leaving hazard lights on. God damn. <laughs> so uh, two, na- two teenage brothers from New Jersey are charged with uh, criminal homicide after cops stumbled on them trying to dump a dead body in the woods <laughs> be- uh, in Pennsylvania because they left their headlights on. Uh, they were pulled over to check on what they assumed was a disabled vehicle on the road, but it turns out when the troopers, you know, got closer to the the scene, they saw like bloody gloves and shoes 
and they um eventually saw like the the teens themselves were like covered like covered in blood and like carrying gloves and they were like oh you know just kind of put the two to two together they killed somebody yeah. and um they had like a large knife on the passenger side floor and um the victim was you know unfortunately they killed obviously because they were dumping his body multiple, right. uh, stabbed multiple yeah. times you know who was the victim to them was it just a random person was it a family member um they don't say as i'm reading the article i don't believe yeah as of right now there is no on who the guy is right it seems more like they just obviously like with most murders it there's obviously some tie to the the murderer you know like the victim is always somehow tied to the murderer unless you're like a psychopath or like son of sam who's just <laughs> killing kids like my dog told me to kill you and you just get shanked and shot yeah oh, man. But yeah, it's, it's just dumb dumb people that don't know what they're doing and trying to dump a body in the, in the... <laughs> I know, dude. I knew you were going. I, you know, I, I was agree so with Chris, dude. They could have done better job. I heard him going that direction. I'm like, where's he going with this? And he's like, you know, they could have done a better job. And I'm like, oh, fucking <laughs> would, Chris. You're so stupid. Well, that's all part of this podcast, right? We're not talking about <laughs> mur- murders. We're talking about dumb people. Yeah. We're talking about dumb criminals, not murders. We're not trying to have a murder show. Hey, be one of those. Are these teenagers murders? Yes. Okay allegedly. then. Thank you. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, the the knife was allegedly placed in the vehicle. Allegedly, <laughs> that's not mine. Uh, all that, um, they, all of the blood. Is, it's, cor- <laughs> it's all corn syrup, guys. Look, <laughs> irony. It's just a pinata. Um, <laughs> I just think it's kind of like weird and like especially stupid because it's like, oh, if you're trying to dump a body. Aren't you trying to be like hide? Like, aren't you trying to be like hidden about it? Like, you're trying to like be sneaky, you know? Oh, we're gonna throw but a body, then, tie some, tie some bricks, and throw them over the river or something. I prefer cinder blocks. So yeah, I get you, man. Okay, well, whatever. You know, you get what I mean. Not like, <laughs> hey, uh, I got a flat. Like, the body's getting pretty stinky in the car. How about we pull over <laughs> and just dump the body over here? So, Justin, so what's different between your comment and my comment? Other than <laughs> just me saying dumb. Me Listen, stupid. Chris, we're we're all stupid. Did you forget the name of this podcast, mm-hmm. huh? Hey, forget. Speak for yourself. That's all I know. Speak for yourself. Okay, <laughs> speak speak for yourself. You sounded like you were having trouble trying to say those words, Chris. God. <laughs> Today, Junior. <laughs> Today. Um, I think it's just dumb overall. Like, <laughs> just repeating myself three times. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Seems, you know, like they should have right. chopped up the body first. No, they should have not, yeah. not just killed anybody in general. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, you know that too. That too. But, you so, know, but so, if, you, if you already so did young. kill someone, you might, well, you might as well. They're might as well try to do the job right. It's like the 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 Slenderman killings. Like those two girls were like, if we if we kill our friend, we'll summon Slenderman. And Didn't like, the victim not... survive, dude? Yeah, she did. Holy shit, dude, man, that must really fuck you up for life, man. Right? Like, I, like obviously she has PTSD, but yeah. I wonder what, like, this is going to sound messed up, but also kind of just out of curiosity. Like, what triggers that? What you triggers what? what uh... Like, her pre, like, what would trigger her PTSD? Well, PTSD stands for post-traumatic, um, so I would think a traumatic... A traumatic uh, situation, just Oh, fucking Chris, I think I got that. I think I was asking more of, like, what causes her to have... It's like Iron Man 3, tying it back to Marvel, when he, like, the kid draws the hallways, it's like, like, how was it up in space? And he has, like, that PTSD moment where he's like, oh, my God, I almost died in space. You know, I'm picturing that with the girl, where, like, what causes her to, like, freak out? You know, how about, like, a freak out of anything? Or panic attack, for uh, for any reason, you know? Like, there's a kid bringing, like, a, a sharp pencil to her and going, like, oh, my God. And she, like, drops to the floor. It's like, oh, my God, I don't want to get stabbed. <laughs> I mean, shit, maybe when, when, uh, 
when someone gets too close with a knife, maybe, or with something sharp, or well, I think that's the obvious. Know, I, I, the, I talk about uh, besides the obvious. Like, yeah. Obviously, like grandma's cutting a cookie cake, and then you know she the girl sees the cake, and she's like, "Oh my god, it's a knife." I'm talking more like Chris gives her a piece of paper, and <laughs> she draws a knife, Ooh, and she freaks or out. Or maybe, like or it's called, or like maybe the words in general, you know. Because that's maybe where she that. was stabbed, you know. So, or maybe she's just scared of tall, slender men now. No, oh, knowing that she was well, sacri- she was well, almost sacrificed. Maybe you wouldn't think that. That's smart. Yeah. Who knows, dude? I, I, who knows? Uh, I don't know. I, you I know, I'll, just... I'll, I'll call her and ask her. Oh, uh, thank, thank you, Danny. Yeah. Hey, find her number and, and let's invite her to the podcast next episode. I think really, I think it's just a random. Like it's just. Has to be specific things and just it could be yeah. anything random that caused her to be. I think there was a documentary a while ago that kind of confirmed that those two girls were full of shit. <laughs> the ones that like stabbed her, they were like, yeah. "Oh, we're trying to summon Slender Man." Where it was more like, "No, we just didn't like this girl." But oh, even then, that's so oh, weird. Was it a was it an HBO documentary or something? I like think that? it was. I think it was. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Like there was new evidence that kind of revealed that they were, the girls were. Um. um they didn't do it for Slenderman. They just used that as a cover up. Yeah. Yeah. And weren't they just charged recently, or was that a different one? I don't know. Charged or indicted. Because what do you mean? yeah, char- charges well when you're charged with a crime, but you're not guilty of, of anything. Oh, right, right. Indicted right. is when uh, it's called sentence. Yeah, like when you actually sentence and whatnot. I don't know. I, I I think overall, like it's such a strange thing to think that a child, because I mean, obviously they're teenagers, right? But like even then, like someone young could kill mm-hmm. someone else. Yeah, yeah and it's like that's it's crazy. Sad. Like that's crazy to me. I don't know. Oh yeah, definitely, and it's sad that they just ruined their whole lives, you know. Like, yeah, I think that's being in jail their whole lives, or at least most of it. So, yeah, I think cool. that like kind of sucks, don't you think? Because then they come out of prison, yeah. and like you, you always hear those the saying that some people prefer to stay in prison. Yeah. So they 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 commit crimes or do anything to get back into it. Yeah. Well, like think about it. Like, what can you do if you spent, you know, fifty years in prison and now you're sixty? What are you supposed yeah. to do? Like, yeah. And you know, your resume. What? It's like, so uh, what are you going to go for? <laughs> oh, you know, murder. Oh. Oh, what kind of oh, murder? Oh, oh, attempted murder. <laughs> oh, attempted murder. Oh, so yeah. you're in sentence. Oh, they, worries, could, you know. they use it to their advantage. They're like, I murdered someone. Oh, oh, okay. You may have heard of me. I uh, <laughs> tried to murder someone for Slender Man. <gasps> you're that girl? Yes, that's that's me. Like, oh my god, we gotta hire you. You can work the back kitchen at McDonald's. And I was the leader there, so you can say I have leadership skills. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good coordination. I'm a good pers- uh, I'm very persuasive. I can lead a, a jury one way or the other. Yeah. Damn. No, but hey, dude, that's that, that sounds a good question, man. Uh, yeah, if anything, what's called like they just become hardened criminals, like once they get in there, especially there, because you know, like they can be there for. For what, like twenty five plus years or something? Do you yeah, think they truly really regret it? Like, do you really think? I feel like some people don't regret it. Like, I feel like most people who are in jail are like, "Yep, I did it. That's what happened. Got to keep moving forward." Whereas other people yeah. kind of go, "Man, I feel sorry for what I did." Like, even if it's something like small, like, "Man, I, I feel sorry for what I did. I shouldn't have done that." You know, who knows, dude? Because I mean, like, they sound pretty fucked. You know, to be like, "I don't like this girl. I'm a killer." You know, that sounds pretty messed up. You know? Yeah. You know, if it was one thing, if, you know, I don't know, like she did something like actually terrible to you, then, eh, you know. Imagine the, her, but, the, the thing they did back to her was just like, I called, she called them ugly. You two are ugly. We got to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who knows, man? But, um, ah, but will they regret it? <sighs> I don't know. I tell maybe, you, it's hard, it's maybe, a, it's maybe. A hard thing. It's all, I feel like, this is me be, maybe being more cynical, but I feel like I've seen enough TV shows and seen enough criminals 
in those TV shows, like an actual like I guess it's reality, so re- reality TV. So you know, take that for what it is. Yeah. But I feel like most criminals, when they come out, they don't feel sorry. I feel like they don't like like none of them come out like you know like that stereotypical like I went in and I came out a changed man. I feel like most of them are mm-hmm. just like I lost fifty years. Time to keep going back to what I was doing, and if that means fucking up again, I'm gonna fuck up again. I think maybe it's because they spent so much time in jail that they kind of already accepted it. And I don't know, they don't want to think about it or something. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just a very interesting topic overall, I feel like. Um, mm-hmm. So what you're saying, for the next episode of Smooth Brain Z, <laughs> will we find out... <laughs> yeah. Will we find out if the murderers really regret anything? Will Justin start repeating Chris for the tenth millionth time? <laughs> Find out next time on Smooth Brain Z. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, so I I feel like we're we're hitting the one hour thirty minute mark. So I guess we can end the Dang podcast right. here. Yeah, we we went really we went by it really quick. We started like two forty nine, and it's four sixteen. I think that's about like roughly like an hour thirty minutes, like hour twenty minutes. Um, bad, thank you everybody bad, yeah. for uh, joining us on this episode of the Smooth Brains if you liked what you heard and you want to hear more subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our content and episodes um, I always want to say follow us somewhere like Twitter or Instagram but we on don't Twitter. have any of those we don't, yeah we don't have <laughs> none of those you, what, you got a problem with Twitter Danny? yeah man the place is toxic as hell man it's super toxic <laughs> There's Chernobyl and th- and then there's Twitter. <laughs> and Twitter's above. T- <laughs> if you were to be in Twitter, like literal Twitter space, you'd melt immediately yep. from the amount of toxicity. Yep. yep, exactly. That's how bad it'd be, man. It's like bad sulfur. Ah. It melts you. I'm more of a phosphorus guy, but yeah, you know, okay, sulfur. Whatever, white phosphorus. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking ass. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for listening, and we hope to see you next time. All right. See y'all. Hey guys.